Cheddar, no, no, dude, dude. Yes, yes, absolutely. We're gonna do that intro. Yes. Yo, oh, yeah, dude, I got you. No, we're we're doing that. Absolutely. Yeah, we have to. We have to now. <laughs> like we freaking have to. Like I think I know. I think the fans will really like it. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll be doing that. Uh, hold on, though. Hold on, hold on. I'm getting a call from one of my parents. Hey, what's up? I love keeping my grandson here with us and all, but. Do you think you could take him back for a while? Actually, I was hoping you would just keep him because, I mean, I'm always doing videos. I'm doing one right now. I got, like, two more plans. I'm your father. Take your kid back. You're my dad. Be a grandfather. You better listen to me, boy. I am Obelisk the Tormentor, God of Gods, the Sealer of Exodia, Ruler of Yu-Gi-Oh! Heaven, and you better take this kid back or so help me, I'll- I tell mom. Just do your video. Good talk. Good talk. Anyways. Who's your mom? Okay, guys, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about, of course, pendulums. And not only are we going to be talking about pendulums, but we're also going to be talking about other decks in our current metagame, mainly True Dracos and Trickstars being the other two main contenders against pendulums. So those are the three decks we're going to be talking about mostly today because everything has really been shaping up really nicely since YCS Bochum. If you follow the event coverage and everything, and just, I mean, you don't really need to follow everything, but really the top 32 breakdowns kind of uh, give you a picture. And not only the top 32 breakdowns, breakdowns of decks, but if you go look at those deck profiles themselves and you see um, how decks have changed, and not only have they changed, but you start seeing more wide variety of basically the same deck, aka Pendulums, you can really see how the game has been shaping up nicely since YCS Bochum. YCS Bochum, of course, being the second biggest Yu-Gi-Oh event in history, which gave us a lot of really good data and it really helped define the format. It really, really did, because this format has really uh, thus far been a hodgepodge format, but I will say in the past couple of weeks, it has definitely gotten more defined, and that's really good to be kind of the subject of today's video and then of course after that we're going to be opening up some fan mail but first off guys i have to give a huge shout out to my sponsor metamats.com if you guys want 10 percent off of any mat from their website guys then enter in the code eugene versus jesus and you will get 10 percent off of any mat that you want and secondly and technically last but of course not least i have to give a shout out to all my patrons thank you guys all so much for your love and support as always but right now let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video the subject of this video and then let's open up some fan mail so first off when it comes to pendulums I want to start by saying, Konami, please stop playing with our hearts. Are, are Pendulums going to be good and broken, or are they not going to be okay? I mean, they are really good and broken. They are currently the best deck in the game. But the point I'm trying to make here is, like, if you would recall before Nats came out, you know, before Nats last year, a Pendulum Evolution came out, right? Pendulum Evolution comes out, and, like, in Nats last year, Pendulums definitely weren't the best deck, okay? It was Zoo. We were still in 2-0. Uh, tier 0, 2-0. We were still in Tier 0, you know, Zoo format and stuff, so Pendulums were far from the best deck. And we even got, you know, Joker back to 3, you know, everything, okay? So you guys already are know all this stuff okay but let's go ahead and fast forward here so so then of course they take joker and stuff away from us which we're all pretty glad about now okay like i can see i can definitely see why now uh, now that we have a uh, new cards released to us uh, new strategies and decks you know available to look at everything uh data you know from ycs bochum or ycs of san jose uh any regional you, you pick from that's happened the past few weeks i mean just guys pick your data source okay pick your data source pendulums are the best deck in the game okay they truly are currently overall the best deck in Yu-Gi-Oh right now and the, the reason behind that is because of the, they just have the highest ceiling but in my opinion guys and this is something that I really wanted to point out in this video okay I kind of wanted to do like a, a quick recap you know showing why um, you know kind of shortly explaining why a pendulums are in their current stage you know with Joker gone and stuff and it's, it's seriously because and why we have wavering eyes back to three because uh, you know the mechanic has changed with Master Rule 4 the play style have, of, of pendulums has changed a lot since Master Rule 4 because you can't you know pin five anymore but Electric might, you know, kind of uh, helps that because, of course, it helps stack your extra deck and it opens up zones. But anyways, though, Pendulums are the way that they are for a reason, guys. I mean, they are currently the best deck in the game. They are, you know, topping, they, they're taking more top slots of tournaments than any other deck. And there's more variations of Pendulums out there right now. More, um, you know, in, more diversity in the uh, deck profiles right now and the tags, card choices, everything, in Pendulums than in any other deck. And Pendulums have had the highest ceiling for a little while now, even with, you know, even after the new list came out. Uh, we 
all knew that Pendulums were going to be the best deck with Electromites. Electromites is just, it was just a beast. I mean, there was a point in time where I wasn't 100% convinced the Pendulums were going to overtake Spiral and everything, even after Spiral got hit. Um, you know, and especially after, you know, the Pendulum hits, everything was kind of up in the air for a little bit. But even after, even after, you know, the Pendulum hits, you know, Joker uh, getting rebanned and all that stuff, looking at Electromites as a card and just looking at the, the things that Pendulums could do, I was saying in videos, guys, I mean, I was like, I have evidence of it. I was making videos, of course. So I was saying, I was like, uh, I don't really know. But very soon after, I was like, uh, yeah, definitely Pendulums are going to be the best deck. And that whole spiel was to really build up to this next point, okay? Another reason why Pendulums are topping so much is because people are figuring out the combos. In other words, um, now that they are confirmed to be the best deck, more people are picking up the deck and really playing it, not just kind of figuring out how it works, actually playing it, playing it. And because they're actually playing it, playing it more and more and more, which, you know, people have been. Since people have figured out the deck more um, and figured out how it works more, they're able to come up with more budget options for the deck. Like Ash Blossom is an expensive card and not everyone can afford three Ash Blossom and stuff. And that's where I'm getting to here, okay? That's where I'm getting at. Budget players are picking up pendulums, guys. Budget players are seriously picking up pendulums, looking at the deck, retooling it, and making it really good because the deck is it has, it has more things it can do. It has more versatility, seriously. In other words, guys, pendulums are topping more in the hands of rogue players because not only only of the highest ceiling, you know, it Oh, having the highest ceiling out of every Yu-Gi-Oh deck in the game right now, uh, but it also has the most versatility. It has more things you can do. Um, it has more room for uh, side decking and, and tech cards that you can add, therefore making the deck overall better, and you could tool it more to go against really anything that you're, that, that whatever your worst matchup is, or just, oh, you could tool it uh, to be better against other Pendulum decks or whatever, and that's that's really the point here, guys. Um, in the hands of rogue players, in the hands of rogue players, like Cheddar Bob, for example, which I did a video on yesterday. I showed you guys his Arodne Pendulum Magician deck profile that he got top 32 with in, in Rhode Island, in a Rhode Island regional. I made a mistake. I said New York because he's from New York, but the regional was actually in Rhode Island, but that it doesn't really matter. Either way, he topped a tournament and he did it with a budget Arodne version of Pendulum Magicians, which is a fantastic deck profile. I mean, I'm going to have it going across your screen right now or something like that, of course, but if you guys want to see, you know, the deck profile in full and hear him talk about that deck and stuff, then check out yesterday's video because I have a whole interview with him where he's talking about his card choices, how he he played the deck, some of his matchups, I mean, just everything. Which is another reason why I wanted to do that deck profile and stuff, was, was to kind of reinforce the point that I wanted to make today. And that point is, guys, Pendulums are just, I mean, we, even without the top 32 data that we have from, you know, YCSs and stuff, um, in the hands of rogue players even, Pendulum Magicians are the best deck in the game, and players are getting better at figuring out figuring that out like i don't know how else to really say it they're getting better at figuring that out and they're topping tournaments more which is going to be influencing our you know data but um pendulums aren't the only deck out right now okay and they're not the only top deck and they're not the only deck that have you know that has been topping the second best deck right now most likely i mean i'm looking just once again looking at the raw data it appears to be a uh, true draco okay and the reason why and i mean it's <laughs> And then I'm probably telling you guys, you know, kind of obvious stuff that you already know right now, but really the reason why True Draco is topping is because of all, it's just the sheer amount of floodgates it can play, really. That's reason number one why, why it's topping. It's similar to why, um, you know, right when uh, Clee Fort came out, you know, if you guys remember, three vanities, three a skill drain, you know, etc. It was kind of like this anti-meta power deck. I mean, it was like the first of its kind. It was like the, our first really good pendulum deck, but it was also like an anti-meta deck. Seriously, it was a straight anti-meta deck. Three skill drain, three vanities, empty this. Again, just so self-explanatory. <laughs> okay, I feel like that's self-explanatory. But, um, you know, a True Draco, I feel like it's that kind of deck. I feel like that, um, you know, True Draco is like the uh, the Clee Fort to um, Pendulum Magician's uh, Shadal or or uh, Pendulum Magician's uh, Burning Abyss, uh, however you want to look at it, comparing it to Duelist Alliance era. It's kind of like the same, it's kind of like the same thing, uh, where one deck is definitely better overall, but um, the other deck is just so uh, good with floodgates and everything, being able to stop your opponent it by paying, playing cards that are good against you. Um, for example, Anti-Spell Fragrance, which really screws over Pendulums. Um, because of that, they're able to, you know, be a really good competitive deck. And on top of that, uh, the second reason uh, True Dracos are really good is because they have really good recoverability. They, they truly do have a pretty good recoverability. And uh, reason number three why they're good is because of Masterpiece, okay? Masterpiece, of course, is still a total beast, total beast. And he's, and he's a pain in the dick to out without 
uh, Utopia the Lightning, okay? And speaking of Utopia the Lightning, it's kind of hard to get over Masterpiece if you're citing your Utopia package instead of mating it, too. So that is another factor. There are people seriously citing Lightning instead of mating it. So that is another factor here as to why True Draco is good. But speaking of Utopia the Lightning and Extra Decks in general, uh, Pendulum Magicians are also currently playing uh, tr uh, Performer Pal. What is the Performer Pal? Trapeze Magician, that's it. They're playing Trapeze Magician for Trick Stars, which is going to be like our next, uh, that's, uh, like I said, it's going to be the next deck we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about about trick stars because uh, trick stars even though they're still a pain in the ass okay <laughs> like, don't get me wrong they're still a terrible deck to duel against they're still oh my gosh they're, they're still seriously chain burn 2.0 they're they're a modern chain burn i don't care i don't care what you say they're modern chain burn don't care okay they really are i um, mean it's not that i'm salty it's just that i'm calling i look i'm calling a cow a cow okay <laughs> but all jokes aside trick stars haven't been uh, topping as much no don't get me wrong they're still a very powerful deck and they're still a very viable deck let me let me just say that right now they really really are but um they they haven't been topping as much, and I think the reason why um, that is, and in my experience, the reason why that is, is because people are figuring out how to beat them. I'm not gonna lie, I'm one of those people when Trick Stars first came out, I kept losing to it. I'm like, man, how do you, like, how do you even do this? Like, you really have to kind of change the way you think because you have to take in to account that that's that's an actual deck that a burn strategy is is out there. You know what I mean? So you have to take that into account in your main, and uh, well, your side at the very least. But in a lot of cases, in some cases, I mean, your main, and uh, definitely at least in one point in time in a more recent history where you kind. Kind of uh, where Trick Stars were uh, second best best deck in the game. It just depended on who, uh, who who the pilot was and who you asked and stuff. But really, guys, I feel like Trick Stars are topping less and they're, because they're just less consistent. Their ceiling's not very high. I mean, they rely a lot on their burn strategy and stuff. I mean, their burn strategy and ta attacking directly. I mean, look, look, look. I mean, Trick Stars, like I said, are still a really good deck. But um, what I'm trying to get at here is that people have figured out how to beat them. Okay, they're, they're, they're like this, this, the tactics are the same. The deck is pretty linear. I, I view uh, like Trick Stars is like the Lanier hero deck in the Necroz format. Um, that's just kind of how I view it. Um, comparing it to Yu-Gi-Oh! History, because as I've explained before and as I've shown, plenty of times Yu-Gi-Oh! History repeats itself, and it repeats itself quite often. Uh, often enough to where I can literally make direct comparisons that are applicable. I mean, that, that's how much Yu-Gi-Oh! History repeats itself. And I also want to add that I feel like Trick Stars um, had so strong of a start um, because of their burn. Like, seriously, only because of their burn strategy. I mean, I know that's kind of like their win con, and that's it's like a no-brainer there like who well, do they have an edge uh, but not only just you know because of their basic win condition but because the deck really just kind of catch caught everyone off guard and catches you off guard or like I was explaining earlier Cleaford how it really caught everyone off guard when it first came out too um even though even though um Cleaford is more like a you know more like true Draco because of, of uh, what I was explaining earlier playing a lot of floodgates and stuff uh, even with all that um Trickstar is, is kind of like Cleaford because uh, Cleaford when it first came out really caught everyone off guard as well because it came out right after, I mean, came out New Challengers right after Duelist Alliance, right? Duelist Alliance format was like a super fast format, minus the Vanity's Emptiness Floodgate strategy, which was, you know, set up your board, flip Vanity's win. Uh, besides that going on at the time, uh, you know, with Vanity's at three, besides that going on, the format was very quick. If you look at, um, you know, the decks that came out of Duelist Alliance at full power, uh, Shadal's Burning Abyss, Teller Knight, um, you know, uh, Ze uh, Yang Zing, that's what I was thinking. I'm not Zephyr, I was thinking of Zephyr Yang Zing, but Yang Zing, you know, those four decks came out of Duelist Alliance. But if you look at those decks from Duelist Alliance, era you know one set to another literally one set to another you can see how it was like all these super fast decks you know burning abyss you know teller night everything i was just naming off compared to cleefort which was kind of like normal summon sacrifice flip skill dream you know what I mean? <laughs> it was just like completely opposite strategies. And, and Klee stole a lot of wins that way because it really caught everyone off guard because it was a completely conflicting play style. And that's really the only point that I'm trying to make here. I'm, I'm sure there's there might be another deck that I'm not thinking of right now to compare Trick Stars to that kind of, uh, you know, caught everyone off guard for a little bit. But once everyone, you know, caught on to their tactics, caught on to their strategy that was quickly uh, quickly uh, beatable, uh, maybe, maybe I'm thinking too hard. Maybe uh, just comparing uh, uh, Trick Stars to uh, Heroes is the most accurate because Heroes would catch uh, Necros players off guard because, um, you know, Dark Law is Dark Law, it's a walking macrocosmos, and it caught a lot of decks off guard because of that, but not only because of that, but searching was a big thing during, uh, you know, Necros format, because Necros was the best deck, it did a lot of searching, and, um, you know, at the time, um, when when Heroes came out, when that uh, Hero Structure deck came out, Dark Law being able to snipe uh, searches and being able to play Mind Drain and combo, Dark Law comboing with Mind Drain and stuff, long story short, that really caught a lot of players off guard, so, so really what I'm getting at here is pick your deck, you know, pick your comparison, because a uh, Trickstar is really more 
more of like a linear strategy um, in comparison to other decks. I mean, uh, it, it, that, well, I mean, True Draco is a linear strategy as well, but it, ha it has less, um, Trick Stars have less power than True Dracos, I think, over Pendulums. And that, of course, is also having, a, obviously, a huge impact on exactly what we're seeing and exactly what, you know, the top decks are and what is, you know, what is and has been shaping up since YCS Bochum and even, and even before. So yeah, guys, that's basically everything that I wanted to talk about as, as far as the current uh, metagame goes, except I still want to add this, and this and this is something I still really believe and, and hold to be true right now. Um, I really feel like that if you make all the right card choices, uh, you can take any deck that you want to to an event and top with it, okay? Right now, we're still in kind of a hodgepodge format. I mean, we still have uh, plenty of other... The reason why I say that, I should say, is because I feel like we still have a mass amount of other viable decks I mean, in comparison to other formats. Other formats in the past, we've had, you know, three deck formats where only three decks are viable and everything else is kind of complete trash. Versus right now, I feel like we kind of have this defined three deck format with everything else actually being also viable. And that's also really, really great. And that's just the last thing I wanted to add to this, guys, to kind of top this discussion off, uh, because this format is actually really great. It's not that I'm complaining about this format at all. This wasn't a complaining video. This was just kind of a, kind of a, you know, look at what's going on and, and kind of, you know, make sense of it and kind of uh, show you guys what decks you should play kind of video. But now with all that being said, guys, I would love to hear what you think about this current format down in the comment section. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Go ahead and let me know. Um, I currently, I actually really like this format. Um, I like our current format because it is so diverse. And, and, and at the same time, it is defined. That's why I like it. I, I feel like right now it's a really good time to play Rogue because it's like, look, here's what the best decks are and here's what our card pool is and go for it. That's that's how I feel. That's how I feel when it comes to playing Rogue right now, guys. And that's kind of what I wanted to get at as well. But now with all that being said, let's go ahead and get to opening some fan mail. All right, I've been trying to control myself for this next one, guys. This is the biggest package I had this this week. This is from Preston Snyder. I'm really excited to open this and see what is in here. Ooh, let's see what we got, man. I don't. I never know what you guys are gonna send. It's you guys are freaking crazy people. I like. I just get so much random stuff. What is? Whoa! <laughs> whoa! That is. That is pretty cool. That is very very cool. And there's a return, a whole return package. Am I gonna be signing this mat, bro? I will definitely sign this mat for you. That is awesome. It's rare that I get whole mats to sign, but when I do, it's amazing because I'm always like, it's so cool to see, you know, what what different mats people play on and send me and stuff. Uh, usually it's Cyber Dragons or something like that, of course, of course. But this is amazing. This is a really well done mat. This is pretty cool. I really dig this mat. I dig like, you know, the extended zones out here and stuff. That is way sick. I really, really like this. Um, oh man though, uh, let's see what, uh, what what all this is. What is, oh man. This is, this is incredible. There's so much stuff. A keep in case they come back. Well, thank you. Dear Lord, no, no, I begin this prayer. <laughs> Hilarious. I begin this prayer informing you of what comes with it in this uh, in this uh, presence a card You will uh, not only find the card I pulled in the first pack of the first set I'm a little late to getting it to you, but still thought you could want it But you will still uh, find also find a play mat I have a custom made on Amazon that I would like you that I would like you to sign Yes, yes, absolutely everything will be marked for you do that is incredible and guys and uh, once again once again I stress this all the time if you guys want anything signed for me anything signed card um, etc. Just be sure to include proper packaging addressed, you know, self-addressed uh, proper packaging in with whatever you want me to sign and uh, I will use that to send, sign and send the things back to you. Like, it's, it's just that simple. It's just that simple. That's all I need, guys. Now that that's out of the way, I just wanted to say again that you are a huge inspiration to me, like I told you on Facebook. I am an aspired filmmaker and Yugi tuber sh sh shameless plug alert. Check out ZK Duels. ZK Duels, guys. But I'm currently in a recovery from a depression, so vids are not the uh, number one priority at the moment because of my health sh uh, should come first. My channel will uh, also feature a live action Yu-Gi-Oh series called uh, Card Chronicles, but that's going uh, slow. Uh, but enough about that. Um, I um, I like to uh, play a few decks. I use uh, to play uh, Noble Knights, but the uh, discover but uh, but just some but then discovered uh, Phantom Knights, then Cyber Dragons and ABCs. After that, I, I now play a deck called uh, Synchronized Union, which uses Torque. To 
Tune gear and the uh, Destrudo engine. Uh, the, yeah, Destrudo is really, really good. The uh, deck um, makes uh, Omega and Trish along with ABC, uh, but it's still a work in progress, and I'm um, uh, working had a, working hard to perfect it. Anyways, I hope you have a good Monday, and I may uh, write you next week. I uh, see you later. In the name of the uh, uh, in the name of Slifer Raw in the Tormentor, Amen. Preston, dude, thank you so, so much for writing, dude. Thank you so much for sending this map. Matter of fact, um, I'm going to sign this right now, right down here. Boom! You now have a Yugi No No signed Cyber Dragon Infinity mat. Woo, you're awesome. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh my gosh. Dude, thank you so much for sending this. This is actually an incredible mat. Like, all jokes aside, like, this is incredible. Oh my gosh. What, what cards? What, what, what are these? So, Monster Aboard. Oh, there we go. C, Crush Wyvern, A, Assault Core, and Destrudo, the Lost Dragons Frigid. Dude, I will definitely sign these and send them back your way. This is incredible. Uh, oh my gosh. Because editing is more annoying than a legion of Jerry Beans men. Dude, thank you so much for, for, for everything. Like, thank you so much for, um, for, for, it's like, I will sign all these for you. Like, Monster Dude, I will sign all these for you. Thank you so much. Uh, keep in case they come back. Oh no. Oh no. What is this? What is this? Like an eradicating aerosol thing? No! Hey! <laughs> Dude, thank you so much! The Cocoon of Ultra Evolution! Oh, boys! It's going down! Oh, man! Thank you so much for this! This is incredible! This is actually the first one I've gotten, believe it or not. No, seriously. I have not seen this card in real life uh, before. I kind of dropped it, uh, to be honest. And this is very, very cool. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so, so much. Uh, this is this is absolutely incredible. All right, this next one is from Andrea. Andrea? A girl? What? Oh, man. Andrea Aggressor. Oh, my gosh. Let's see what this says, guys. Oh, man. Once again. Once again, girls watch this YouTube channel. People, uh, Look, girls watch my Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTube channel because I'm the only Yu-Gi-Tuber with a girlfriend. Sorry guys, sorry to all the other Yugi tubers out there, but you know what? I, I gotta I gotta ho hog everybody. It's not it's not enough that I have a girlfriend. I, I gotta have all the girls that play Yu-Gi-Oh watch my channel and not you guys' channels. That's I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's it's not me. And it's it, look, it, it, this is the free market. You know, like they're choosing me. They're choosing me. Plus, you know these devilish good looks. Oh, Yugi Jesus has some devilish good looks. <laughs> Holy crap, though! Oh my gosh, so many cards. Lots of cards. It's everything out of that. So lots of cards. What is all this? Okay, so there's that, and then a bunch of cards. Let's see what this says. So, hi, Yugi Nono. So I found your channel two weeks ago, and I play DDD. It's my best deck. Uh, can you uh, can you please give me uh, some advice on what links I should uh, use on my deck? Um, isn't there like the new Fiend one? Did that come out in Extreme Force? I can't remember. Um, you need like the one, the, the two fiend monsters. I can't remember if it came out in Extreme Force. Uh, if it's not out yet, you can always, um, you know, uh, download YGO Pro. Uh, go to their Discord server. Um, yeah, the, the, the link's beta is out. And plus, you can always go to DuelingBook.com. Um, either way, let's look up fiend type link monsters or just link monsters in general. Deco Talker is a good generic link monster, for example. Um, just, I mean, pick, um, pick your link monster, you know? P.S. The magic sleeves are for signing and the pink sleeves are for you to keep. Uh, please mail them back uh, to me. My mom includes included an envelope. Oh, it was his mom. Oh, that's cool. Hey, included an envelope for you to use, please. I am a big fan. Andrew. Oh, so it was your mom that did it. Dude, absolutely. I'm sorry about that. Sorry. Andrew, I will absolutely sign these cards for you and get them back your way. I will absolutely sign these for you. Um, thank you so much for writing. And dude, you have a really, really cool mom. My battery is seriously about to die right now, but you have a really, really cool mom and you should thank her for doing this. And I will absolutely sign these and get them back your way. Thank you so much for writing. And thank you. Seriously, thank your mom. Thank your mom for writing. Subscribe. <laughs>